dumb, dangerous, and un-American. That is just some of the strong language that President Biden is using to blast Donald Trump for comments that Trump made over the weekend. Trump, during a rally on Saturday in South Carolina, said he would allow Russia to attack NATO countries that failed to pay more for their own defense. And to be clear for Trump, that comment pretty much par for the course. As president, he was a very outspoken critic of NATO and also an isolationist. America first was the slogan, right? But critics say these latest remarks simply cross the line. President Biden not holding back on his predecessor Tuesday, calling his comments on NATO, Russia, and Article 5's mutual defense dumb, shameful, dangerous, and un-American. Just a few days ago, Trump gave an invitation to Putin to invade some of our allies, NATO allies. He said if an ally didn't spend enough money on defense, he would encourage Russia to, quote, do whatever the hell they want, end of quote. The worst thing is he means it. No other president in our history has ever bowed down to a Russian dictator. He accused Mr. Trump of being transactional, while also saying NATO is a sacred commitment and one America should never abandon. For as long as I'm president, if Putin attacks a NATO ally, the United States will defend every inch of NATO territory. The remarks followed a call by the president for the House to this take up the bipartisan the national security supplemental. The bill as amended passes. The $95 billion spending package passed the Senate with a whopping 70 votes and includes $60 billion for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, nearly $5 billion for Taiwan, and more than $9 billion in humanitarian aid for civilians in conflict zones like Gaza, saying supporting this bill is standing up to Russian President Putin. For Republicans in Congress who think they can oppose funding for Ukraine and not be held accountable, history is watching. But already the House Speaker rejecting the deal because it doesn't include border security, writing in a statement, in the absence of having received any single border policy change from the Senate, the House will have to continue to work its own will on these important matters. Overnight, the White House firing back, accusing Johnson of a dizzying border security tailspin, all in the name of politics. When given the opportunity to support the toughest, fairest bipartisan border bill in decades, he killed it. White House spokesperson Andrew Bates said in an overnight statement, now, the speaker says he won't stand with Ukraine against Putin and Tehran because the legislation doesn't include the very kind of border deal he killed. But without the speaker on board, the only way forward for the funding package, a congressional workaround called a discharge petition, a cumbersome process that requires 218 votes, meaning bipartisan support. Serena Marshall, Scripps News, Washington.